Hometown Discoveries Las Vegas is a local weekend morning show featuring the people, events, and companies that make Las Vegas the place to live, shop, work, and play. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Today we're at Roseman University of Health Sciences. Access to quality health care is a major concern here in the Valley. We're going to be meeting with Dr. Renee Kaufman, one of the co-founders and leaders here at Roseman, and she'll be telling us how they're addressing health care needs in the Valley. Before we hear from Dr. Kaufman, let's take a look at what else we have in store for you today. Richard Hansen, our wealth advisor, inspires confidence. We've got some interesting fellows to keep your indoor plants nourished. Linda Ward, our mortgage expert, has advice to get you pre-qualified for a home loan. Joe Marsh with CrossFit Las Vegas tells us how connecting with a community inspires his members. And our pharmacist Jamie Donaldson advises who should consider getting a flu shot. Now let's meet Dr. Kaufman. Hi, Renee. Thank you so much for joining us or actually allowing us into your school here and your university to, to tour and, and get to know you better. Tell us, you have a big role here. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Roseman. Well, my title is Executive Vice President for Quality Assurance and Intercampus Consistency. So uh, what that boils down to is making sure that all of our programs are producing the highest quality graduates and trying to enact the policies, procedures, and, and processes to make sure that our students are the best possible graduates that we can possibly have. The other part of that on the intercampus consistency side is we do have another campus that we built in South Jordan, Utah um, about three years after we started the program here. So ensuring that the same quality levels and, and the processes and, and procedures, policies are the same on both campuses is one of the big focuses of that role. And you were telling me that, well you're a co-founder of the university, and you were telling me as you were starting the university that you worked in the in a pharmacy community here. Yeah, when we first started here, I mean this was truly a ground up um, startup. Uh, my husband and I were the only two here. We didn't have any income coming from the school at the time, so we uh, I, I worked 30 hours a week in uh, what was then a Savon pharmacy, not too far from here, and um, it was it was great to be in the pharmacy, um, but it also helped us as we were getting things ready to accept students here. So it was a good time. Uh, I don't know how I'd want to do it again just because of all of the work it was, but it was a really good time. Oh, that's great. So why Las Vegas? Well, you know, the, at the time um, when we moved here in 1999, of course, the population was just booming here, um, and particularly amongst retirees. And in the state of Nevada, there was no college of pharmacy, and there was a huge shortage. And uh, pharmacies, pharmacists, pharmacy agencies were having a hard time filling positions and so there were a lot of studies that show that where pharmacists are trained is where they actually end up practicing eventually and so we felt that there was a huge need that we would be able to help address by starting a college of pharmacy. Oh that's great so so you're a mom you're not just a, a, a leader here at the <laughs> university you're a mom what are your some of your favorite family outings and things you like to do here? Well, my daughter is heavily involved in competitive soccer, so yeah, so, um, so you're a I'm soccer a, mom. I'm a, I am a soccer mom. I'm out there at the field three times a week with her when she's practicing and driving all over town and, and going out of town to the different competitive tournaments that she plays in. She's been involved in that in soccer since she's been about four in competitive soccer for the last about four years. So um, it's been a great time. It's a, it's a great time for us to get together and, and have some fun. And, and she really enjoys it a lot. So um, it's a really good outlet for us. That's great. Well, and you know, our children have so many more opportunities here in Las Vegas now. Tell us about the programs you offer. Yeah, we started with the College of Pharmacy. So that was our first um, degree offering that we had. And then as we were in the community longer and recognized other needs in other health professions, we started to expand. And so the first expansion program that we added on was a Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. And as you know, the nursing shortage then and now is still very acute. So again, we wanted to address the needs of the community through the programs that we were offering. The next programmatic offering that we had was an MBA program. And that may sound a little bit different um, in terms of the healthcare focus that we have, but really the MBA that we offer is a healthcare focused MBA. And it was born out of the idea that folks that are involved in healthcare can't escape 
the economics of healthcare, can't escape the business of healthcare. If you're a pharmacist, you really have to understand how those prices and, and the economics of how those drugs affect your patient your patients and how they um, decide what they're going to uh, spend their money on, um, how compliant they're going to be. Um, plus many pharmacists now are, are looking to start up their own independent pharmacies, so to have that business background to be able to do that. And as we've added our other programs, we've in, uh, integrated that MBA even more than what we do now. Um, after the MBA program, we added an orthodontics residency program. So for trained dentists here in I town, think we're going to go meet your orthodontist. You will be blown away yeah. by that orthodontics facility. It is state of the art. It's beautiful. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that we're able to offer um, superb orthodontic care at a much reduced cost because our students are the ones that are providing that care in conjunction with licensed orthodontists who have gone through residency training themselves. Um, but that orthodontic program is very unique in the United States because it's combined with an MBA. So our students when they graduate this orthodontic residency program also have their MBA degree. And as you know, most orthodontics, orthodontists have their own private practice. Right. And uh, one of the things that orthodontists often say is, look, I never learned how to meet a payroll or how to yeah. budget for a payroll or all of the type of how to management. Run a exactly. Yeah. And so it really made sense to combine that orthodontics program with the MBA degree. And so you have some unique study philosophies here and and uh, and grading philosophies. So you want to talk about that a little sure. bit? Sure. Well, it all starts from thinking about healthcare professionals and the need for healthcare professionals to be highly competent. So, you know, when you walk into your pharmacy, you want your pharmacist to be right 100% of the time, right? Yes. But when you go to pharmacy school all across the United States, passing is 70%. Wow. For most places. And imagine <laughs> having only 70% uh, accuracy in a pharmacy. That, that would be deadly. Well. It'd exactly. be deadly. Yeah. Absolutely. So we start from the premise that we want our students to be highly competent. And to be highly competent, what we expect is they get 90% on every test that they take. And for us, it's not as important that they do that the first time around. I want to make sure that by the time they get out of here, they're 90% competent, 100% competent in everything that they're doing. And so we've designed a curriculum that supports the attainment of very high levels, mastery levels of learning. So to do what we do, uh, to get the 90%, we offer one class at a time. So students can focus and concentrate on one content area of our curriculum, master that content before moving on to the next. We assess our students or give them a test every other week. Um, they're in class for six hours a day. And not all of that is lecture time. Obviously, you couldn't lecture to somebody for six hours a day and have anybody remain sane. Yeah, and retain it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that six hour day is broken up with a lot of active learning uh, activities that the students do. Um, as we looked at the educational literature, the educational literature supports very heavily, particularly for adult learners, the uh, providing opportunities for those students to really engage and dig into that material so that they really understand it. So while we may present um, an hour of lecture, the next hour students are off into their teams working together on problem solving activities, case studies, practice problems, all of those things that would help to reinforce the material so that they really understand it, really learn it, really know it. So uh, parents at home who have students who may be considering a healthcare career or, or a college career, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, they, you know, when the, the, the student is in high school, you know, make sure that they're paying attention to those science and math courses in particular, but in general having a, a well-rounded education and doing well so they can position themselves to get into college, to do well in college, you know, building those study habits is hugely important as well so that when they get to their first component of their college career, they have positioned themselves to be successful and then to get into a program like ours. Now, um, our pharmacy program, for example, um, the minimum GPA requirement is 2.7, but the average GPA of our incoming class is about 3.5, 3.6. So, you know, it, it's a very highly competitive program, and so they have to position themselves so that they are able to um, compete with the other folks that are trying to get into our program and have a, have a good chance of, of being here. Well, and good schools like yours have about 10 applicants for every seat you fill. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, so yep. they need to really be watching that in those early formative years. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we have so much more to talk about, and a little later in the program, we'll come back and ask you more about research and about what you're doing in the community here. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks.
Up next, we sat down recently with our wealth advisor, Richard Hansen, out at Anthem Country Club. It's a pleasure to be here. How do you like Anthem? Isn't it beautiful? You know, my fiance and I play a lot of golf. And we came out here a year ago and joined. And uh, we, we spent about two and a half days a week out here. And we just enjoy the facility. And I hope that it's showing up well on the camera because it is a joyful place to be. It's so green. It's almost like we're not here in the desert, but we are in the desert. And uh, we just love it out here. We love the people, we love the setting, and of course we love playing golf. That's kind of what we do for recreation. You know, in the final analysis, there's only a couple of places to invest your money, either the private sector or the public sector. The private sector is your own business, uh, real estate, those kinds of things. And people do very well with them. The public sector would be other people's businesses, stocks, bonds, uh, mutual funds which are accumulations of stocks and or bonds, alternative investments, or in the real estate area, there would be real estate trusts which are rather large um, entities that manage large chunks of commercial real estate. So when we boil that down, we get down to it's not as complex as you thought, is it? Now the complex piece might be if, if you are going to invest in the securities market, how do you do that? Uh, are you going to go online and pick your five of the 16,000 funds that are out there? How are you going to choose your five? What we try to do is we try to take people uh, to our, our uh, professional money managers uh, and produce for them a portfolio that's based on their appetite for risk and their need for a return to accomplish these goals and objectives. I have a client um, that we'll call him DC for lack of, and that's not Washington DC either. But he is sold his business and he's the second generation of wealth accumulators in a private business. Now he sold that business and uh, now has quite a bit of money. Um, one third of that money, he still uh, invests himself. He invests in, he likes real estate here in the local area. He likes things like that uh, and he takes care of that money. Two thirds of that money is invested in the public markets. So we've developed portfolios for him that uh, make him comfortable, provide him a return, and they're managed 24 seven by professional money managers uh, uh, that give him a comfort in terms of his rate of return and his accumulating wealth. He's been in a very conservative bond fund making 5% on his money. You can't do that at the bank, okay? So in order to act, gain access to some of these uh, investments, you need to have professionals on your team that have access and deal on it every day. I'd love to meet anyone who is, who's interested in protecting their financial future and we can have a discussion with absolutely no expectations on my part. Want more hometown discoveries? Check out our Facebook page and hit the like button. We'll be posting behind the scenes photos and comments that we want to share with you. We're back here with Linda Ward and one of my favorite segments on the show, Growing Your Garden in the Desert. Linda, you have an interesting creature here today. Yes, I do, Debbie. Actually, it is a red wiggler. Can I, I don't touch know it? if we Oh, absolutely. I don't know if you can get a close-up shot of my red wiggler worm hooked. There we go. <laughs> there he goes wiggling around. <laughs> now, everybody wants to know, how can I compost? I live in an apartment, I live in a condo. I've got HOA the restrictions are really tough. What do I do with my, my vegetable trash every day? Um, it's very easy. Actually, I, have, I compost two different ways. One, I keep a big garbage can in my backyard tucked on the side of my fireplace so the HOA doesn't see it. Yeah. The other way is I keep my red wigglers actually in a plastic container underneath my kitchen sink. 
I feed them every day lettuce. They eat half their weight every day. So you have to feed your worms every day. Wow. But basically, once they eat it, then it's considered worm castings. What's, what are worm castings? Worm poop. <laughs> okay. Okay, we said it. It's out there. <laughs> and what you do after it builds up a little bit, you kind of pull your worm castings aside, pull the worms to the other side, and you scoop the worm castings out, and it is actually an excellent fertilizer for your house plants, for your plants outside. You dilute it a little bit, and it's just a, it's a natural fertilizer. And what do so, you dilute it with? Water. Oh, wow. Water. And you're going green. So if you've got limited space, don't tell me that you can't compost. You can keep it underneath your kitchen sink. Yeah. And uh, especially if you have those coffee grounds from the morning, throw those in at night when you're cleaning up your kitchen. You know what it is? What? It's an aphrodisiac for the worms. Oh my gosh. No wonder my <laughs> grandmother used to throw the coffee grounds in the worm bed. <laughs> so happy gardening till next week. Hi, I'm Linda Ward with Red Rock Mortgage. Congratulations, you have just taken the first step. You've decided that you wanna buy a house, soon, before the interest rates go up. But your realtor has said, oops, I need a pre-approval letter before I actually show you some houses. Now you've driven around the neighborhoods, you've identified where you'd like to buy your home, you know the school districts that you wanna be in, you know whether the house is, has to be close to your work, but your realtor really needs a pre-approval letter before you start looking because you're going to find that dream home and the seller is not going to know whether you can qualify to purchase that home. That's where I come in, Linda Ward at Red Rock Mortgage. Let me just tell you what a pre-qualify is. Basically, we're going to pull your credit. We're going to make sure that your debts, that you've paid all of your monthly obligations. Then we're also going to look and see, do you have enough money for a down payment? What about your job situation? Are you making enough money to cover not only your current debts, but your new monthly payment? So that's where the pre-qualification comes in. Now to do that, when we sit down, it takes a little over an hour of your time to come in and we sit and we look over all of that information. So let me tell you what you'll need to bring in. I'm going to need to see two years of your tax returns with your W-2s, two current payroll stubs, two current bank statements. That's where we're going to identify your down payment, your driver's license. We have to identify that you are really you. Then we're going to pull your credit. We're going to fill out the loan application, make sure that you have a work history, Make sure that you have filled out all the blanks and you ha you're totally ready to go. It'll take us maybe an hour, maybe two hours, but at that time you're also not locking into an interest rate until you buy the house. Then, once we have your purchase agreement, we can lock in your interest rate and it's about 45 days till you move in. Give me a call when you're ready. Linda Ward at Red Rock Mortgage, 320-9595. If you have a question for one of our experts, you can contact us on our website at hometowndiscoveries.com. Have you kept your New Year's resolution to get fit? Joe Marsh at CrossFit Las Vegas gives us a reason to renew that commitment. I think everybody drives each other to, to work harder, to be stronger, to be better. I tried the first three days of something we do called uh, Share the Pain. Uh, it's when you can invite friends and family to try the CrossFit classes for free. And I just fell in love with it. <laughs> Any CrossFit gym you go to is always going to have this community feel to it. There's everybody there knows everybody there. Here, when you walk in, you've got at least three, four people slapping you on the back saying, it's good to see you again. Uh, I'm going to kill you today.
There's a lot of motivation involved. There's no, there's no negative um, comments. There's no negative looks. Everybody's helping everybody out. During the workout, there's a lot of people really just cheering you on. It's a high energy, and, and I, I highly recommend it for anybody. It's sort of like a home away from home, and everybody cheers each other on. And it's that drive, that, that friendly competition that we look for, that we strive for, and that, that's the biggest difference between any CrossFit gym and any regular gym. The end is nigh, children, I swear. Here's Jamie Donaldson, our local pharmacist, with advice about preventing the flu from catching you. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Hometown Discoveries. Today I want to talk about the flu. Flu season is, is getting close. In fact, in some ways it's already here. So uh, let's discuss when should you get a flu shot to prevent the flu. The Center for Disease Control recommends that everyone should get a flu shot six months or older you should get a flu shot. Uh, if you're struggling with whether or not, you know, I really don't want to get this flu shot, uh, here's some things you sh should consider. Uh, if you're 50 or older, you should definitely get a flu shot. If you have a medical condition such as diabetes, uh, heart condition, uh, asthma, you should definitely get a flu shot. Uh, a pregnancy, you should get a flu shot. Uh, children, by all means, because being in school, they're going to be exposed to the virus and they need that protection. So uh, it's very, you know, they should definitely get a, a flu shot. You should talk that over with your pediatrician, but I think all school children should be vaccinated against the flu. So uh, let's keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to make the decision. Uh, if you're working in an environment where you come in contact with a lot of people with the flu, such as a clinic, a hospital, a nursing home, a school teachers, uh, you should definitely get the flu shot. Uh, the flu shot will prevent the flu and it will keep you from uh, uh, getting sick. As far as getting sick from the flu shot, it's very, very rare that you're going to get ill from the flu shot. If you get ill, it's caused from something else. The only time not to get a flu shot, if you're allergic to eggs or egg protein, or if you're experiencing a high fever, uh, you should get the flu shot when you're well and, you're, and your fever is normal. So uh, that's the only two times that I know of that you should not get a flu shot. So I highly recommend that everyone get a flu shot. Again, thank you so much for watching and your health is priceless. What's your favorite Las Vegas discovery? Follow us and tweet with us at Hometown D. We're back with Dr. Renee Kaufman, co-founder of Roseman University, talking about the important research happening here. So tell us about your research programs here. Yeah, um, we have been very fortunate to bring on to the university some very um, highly qualified uh, researchers. Uh, many of them had been prior uh, prior to this had been at the Nevada Cancer Institute and so they were doing a lot of great research there and we brought them in and we've got one group that's focusing primarily on diabetes and obesity research because we know you know what a tremendous problem that is not only Huge. here in Nevada mm -hmm. but nationwide and actually even across the world now we're starting to see some trends um, mm -hmm. that are not positive so yeah, childhood obesity is definitely a growing growing problem absolutely and so we, our researchers are looking at that at the cellular level, the subcellular level, to try to figure out what's going on there and how can we create perhaps some new therapeutic entities or drugs to treat that and prevent some of the, a lot of the negative consequences that come when a patient does have uh, diabetes or, or who is obese. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we've got another group that's working on cancer research, and um, these folks um, are just doing great work for us right now. Um, we've got an NIH grant, we've got a Department of Defense grant that have been transferred over to us as they've moved into our, um, our facilities. And, you know, they are publishing their, uh, their research results both nationally 
and internationally. And so Roseman's name is getting out there uh, even internationally to know the type of research that we're doing here. That's great. Congratulations. And it helps our valley get known. I know you're in Henderson, not in Las Vegas. I've been saying Las Vegas all along, but I kind of consider the whole, fam the whole valley a family here. Absolutely. And it, what you're doing is helping uh, put us on the map as a serious community of um, education and, and health care providers. Yep. If you look across the nation at some of the, the great cities, the Bostons of the world, the San Francisco's, you know, the Chicago's, part of what makes them great is a really strong higher education uh, system. And not just the public education system, but the privates as well, you know, the Harvards, the Stanfords, the USC's. You know, we want Las Vegas and Southern Nevada to be part of that group of people and to have that you know, that high level of education and opportunity mm -hmm. for its students and for the community. Now, your, your students and your faculty get involved in the community here as well. Tell us about some of those programs. Absolutely. I'm so proud of uh, what our students do in the community. We've had students involved in what's called a drug abuse awareness team, and that group goes out to junior highs and high schools and talks to the, to the students there, particularly about the dangers of prescription drug abuse, which has become, again, one of those big problems uh, that has arisen in the last few years mm -hmm. that we didn't really encounter maybe when I was growing up. Um, they also are very involved in um, drug take back programs throughout the, the valley in association with the uh, police department and also the Drug Enforcement Administration. So they've taken back tons and tons of, of medications that are either past their expiration date or that the patients don't need anymore, which keeps them out of the hands of people that don't need to be taking them. Right. And I love the name of that program, Operation Medicine Cabinet. Yes. That has a very catchy, memorable <laughs> name. Yeah, and they've done, they've gotten awards for that program and they've done really a lot of good work with that. Um, we also have other student groups that go out and participate in health fairs. They're out at health fairs almost every week and screening patients for diabetes, uh, screening for blood pressure problems, and uh, you know, literally thousands of folks in this valley have been screened by our uh, students uh, under the supervision of our faculty and you know we've been able to help a lot of people who may have been walking around and not even known that they had diabetes or had hypertension so that they can get referrals back to their physicians to, to start getting treatment and care. Well thank you so much for everything you're doing in this community. Thanks. Previously on Hometown Discoveries you heard from Branch Whitney, local author and hiking expert. You can see all our past programs on YouTube. You can even subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash hometown discoveries. We have so many more discoveries to share with you and we're out of time today, so we'll be back here again tomorrow. In Sunday's episode, we'll be meeting some of the physicians and patients at Roseman University's orthodontic clinic. They see our faculty and they realize they really are getting the best treatment possible for a very affordable price. Joanne Lucia, our interior design expert, talks about her unique approach to home decorating. And of course, we'll have so much more. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here on KTUD Vegas TV.